Landon, Best Buy, uh, pretty quietly, very, very strong 2020, as Evelyn and, and Kevin laid out for us. And the prospects going forward are strong with the demand in the tech space. But how strong are they? Uh, your data, of course, uh, is going to be indicative of some of that consumer purchase intent. What is the, what is the chatter around this company? Yeah, so Best Buy obviously uh, benefiting, as Evelyn pointed out, from work from home, gaming, and other trends. And when we look at how many people are talking about going into a Best Buy or ordering online, we look at the sort of the fiscal quarter breakdown. What's really interesting, so they've got their uh, fiscal quarter for Q4 ending right now on Saturday, actually, the ends on Saturday. Uh, and it is up significantly. So it's up about 66%, uh, whether you measure it on a quarter over quarter or year over year basis, very strong. Uh, and again, that quarter is just about to end. So they'll have earn earnings coming out in maybe two, three, four weeks, something like that. But if you look at that green bar on the very far right, uh, that is what we're talking about. So that quarter, normally we, we're always talking about the quarter they're about to report tomorrow, that kind of thing on this show. But uh, this is actually one that's just ending. And so we've got a little bit of time before the earnings are released. And we're showing this as the best quarter they've had on history. And a lot of that has to do with just a change in business model. So, you know, you had stores closed for a while or if they were essential, they were open, but you couldn't go into them. And Best Buy has adapted fantastically. Uh, it's all about online now. Digital purchase is up significantly. It's over doubled in the last uh, month. And so this is where people, instead of going into the store and not sure what they're buying or getting help and walking around and shopping. They're going online, they're buying exactly what they want, and they're either having it shipped to them, uh, which is about 60% of the online experience, or they're actually going into the store and picking it up or getting it picked up curbside, which is 40% of the experience. And so you can see here with digital mentions, this is people talking about shopping at bestbuy.com and either getting that curbside pickup or having it shipped to them up significantly. It was already doing fairly well. And you could see big, big boosts around the holiday season as people were shopping uh, for friends and family Christmas. But uh, now it's just everyday life. And so uh, they're actually doing a lot of uh, remodeling considerations. They've already started on some stores where they've got a covered pickup area, then that is right next to the warehouse. And so they're, they're completely changing and adapting to what the consumer wants. And the website is getting it done. So uh, big kudos for Best Buy. They're turning it around. They're taking advantage of a situation that you know many companies are, are benefiting from and many companies are struggling with uh, this whole quarantine. Even though we're coming out of it, I do think that behaviors have changed and they've now gotten to the people to the point where they're going to go to the website first as opposed to going into the store and asking for help. Landon, is what makes Best Buy so strong and what makes their numbers so impressive their niche has got to be in my opinion like if i go to the apple store right i i'm looking at apple products i can't compare and contrast they're a multi-brand electronics retailer right they've got every brand there where what store can you go into to look at an xbox and a playstation at the same place, if you go on Sony or 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 Microsoft's web website, you're not looking, you're not comparing the two. So, is that part of their strength that they are like a a you know a multi-brand retailer of electronics products, and it allows you to compare them where stores that you know are pigeonholed into one product can't do that. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And what's interesting is if you think about the online experience, uh, a lot of products are very easily comparable on your computer screen. You know, you can look at the specs. If you're talking about a computer or other kind of product, there's really very simple ways to quantify how good this product is. Uh, but for other products, maybe with a, a TV or something or sound system, you want to go in, you want to see them, you want to hear them, uh, you want to compare two side by side, two different brands completely. And so that is where they can take advantage of that's an old school retailer model. Uh, it works really well in digital products or electronic type products. Uh, obviously, Best Buy positioned very well for that. I think that's a great point, Kevin. So Landon, is the big takeaway here, I, I recall a conversation I believe was with Megan uh, just uh, earlier, or actually it was last week regarding Polaris. And the big takeaway wasn't necessarily that things were, were starting to show growth, but that the growth was accelerating and that that kind of projects out into the future then if you're able to you know continue to show strength and it's getting stronger at a faster rate 
that's showing signs that this is a real trend. Is that the similar kind of takeaway here with Best Buy as we're starting to really see that ramp up uh, as we project down to the future? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, just looking back at that quarterly bar chart, um, normally you see 10, 20 percent year over year. That's a fantastic year. We're looking at 60 percent. Um, and, and again, this is people talking about going into Best Buy. So I'm not saying that's going to match up exactly with revenue numbers, but that bar is off the charts. And it's because the, the purchase intent is accelerating. You're absolutely right. Uh, very strong numbers out of Best Buy. We're expecting over the next little bit. Now, analysts are also expecting pretty strong, pretty strong numbers. But when you do the math on a, a either quarterly or year-over-year -year basis, as far as initial projections, we've got them beating those very high analyst expectations. And again, that is because of the acceleration. And I think it has a lot to do with the trends that are supporting this. I mean, Evelyn touched on it. But again, working from home, you've got to have a new computer, you got to have the webcam, you got to have a microphone because you're doing all that. And the same thing with schooling from home. A lot of kids are at a home now and they're buying new laptops because they've got to have one. Their brother or sister's got to have one. They can't use mom or dad's because they're working from home. So that's a huge trend. And of course, as all these kids are staying home, not just uh, younger kids, but college kids, they're playing a lot more games. So they're buying Xbox, PlayStation, new controllers, headsets, microphones, all that kind of stuff. And another one that we don't really think about that Best Buy is benefiting from is home renovation. That's up about 20%. And even though that generally is going to support companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, Wayfair, uh, Sherman Williams, companies like that, Best Buy also gets a piece of that as well. Because as you're renovating, maybe you decide to get a little bit more into the tech side. You get a new TV, you get new speakers, whatever it may be. So pretty much every trend that has been created by COVID and the quarantine is benefiting Best Buy. And the only thing that could have hurt them was the fact that people weren't going to stores, but they solved that with their website and, and dominance through the online experience and the curbside pickup. So uh, everything's not only set up and teed up really well for Best Buy, uh, but they're hitting it out of the park. They're, they're executing on all cylinders.